So in the last video, we arrived at this result. And even though um, this looks like a lot of math, the idea behind it, I hope to convince you, is pretty simple. We've got a curve, we want to know its length. Oh no, we can't figure out the length of curves, only straight lines. Fine. Zoom in, figure out the length of this little straight line, do some Pythagoras stuff on it. And then the total length of the blue curve is the length of all these little lines. And so what this says is add up S, giant sum, integral, all of these, and these are just hypotenuses of these little straight lines, and do that from YA to YB. So we're going to sort of step along the Y axis, and as we do so, we're going to be calculating these little hypotenuses, and we're going to add them together. Um, I'll say a little bit more about that conceptually in a second, but I want to um, write this in a different form algebraically. So let me do that now. So I'm going to start with this. Actually, let me just start with this um, square root piece. So I've got dx squared plus dy squared square root. All right, I'm going to factor out a dy squared. So, is this really true? Yes, because let's um, do the multiplication. So dy squared times dx squared over dy squared just gives me dx. Hey, that's what I have over here. dy squared times 1 gives me dy squared. So, um, this is indeed true. It looks like I just made a complicated thing worse, but um, bear, bear with me. It, it will get a little bit better. So now I've got square root of something times something. I can rewrite this like this. So I just um, write the square root of a product as a product of square roots. And then something kind of nice happens. This dy squared, square root, those undo each other. And so this just becomes a dy. So this is dy and then this square root. And let me just reorder this a little bit. I'm going to write this like this. So to go from here to here, I just rearrange things. I moved the dy at the end, and I made this 1 plus blah instead of blah plus 1. All right, so now I'm going to go back to this term and just write it in a slightly different way, and that will be our final form. I'll do that here. So this, again, is total path length. And that's going to be this fancy expression, and then that piece. 1 plus dx squared on dy squared square root dy. So that's our formula for path length. Final result. So I'll put that in a box. So here's the result we just arrived at. That the path length, well, to find the path length of a curve, you add up all the little line segments that make up the curve, and that takes this form, this thing that's called a definite integral from calculus. And you might wonder, well, if you're just adding up stuff, why does this have to be so complicated? So let me say a little bit about integrals and about addition um, and multiplication. So um, you might have had a time when you're in a, a, a theater or you're at a concert or something back when we were still allowed to gather together in groups. And maybe it's like a big rectangle. 
and you want to know uh, maybe it's like every seat is filled and you want to know wow how many people are here so um, you notice maybe that um, each row of seats is the same number like maybe there's um, each row of seats is 10 and there's seven rows and you say oh you know what I can just um, multiply 7 by 10 and say, aha, there are 70 people in this um, rectangular theater. There might be other times when there's a theater where it's shaped like this. It's, it, it gets wider in the back. And then that trick won't work. Maybe the, you know, like this row is 6, and then there's two rows of 7, and a row of 8, and a row of 11. You're like, ah, all right. I, I can't use that multiplication trick. I'm just going to have to count the rows and add them all up. I mean, it's no big deal, but um, you, just have, you just have to add it up. You can't multiply. Um, and so a way I think about that is you're trying to add something up, but the thing that you're adding up is changing as you're adding it. So in this case, it's the number of rows um, in this auditorium, and that's changing as you're adding it up front to back. And um, um, let's see. So let me let's go back to the rectangular one, for example. So in that case, you could also add them all up: seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven plus seven, ten times. Um, and it turns out there's a special name for that: multiplication, successive addition. What do you do when you're adding something up that's changing when you're adding it? Like in this situation, well, there's a special name for that. It's a definite integral. It's that. So in this case, why do we have to do this fancy business? Well, it's because the hypotenuse is changing as we are trying to add up along the y-axis. And I drew this curve even a little more sharp, so maybe that will be clearer. So um, let's say you take this, this first step. That could be your initial dy, that first segment. And you can see that blue hypotenuse is almost straight. When we zoom in on a curve, it looks almost straight. And that's a pretty long line. We could do the same thing here. Let me, let me circle, I guess, in this case. So then, uh, how do I want to draw this? In this case, in there, the hypotenuse, so there's almost no dx at all. So the length of the line segment here is very short. The length of the line segment here is much longer. So the length of the line segments are changing as we're adding them up. And that's why we have to summon up this bit of calculus. So um, what calculus does is it gives us a way of doing all of this addition without having to actually do the addition. So there's... Um, a trick or technique called the fundamental theorem of calculus that lets you evaluate these crazy addition type things without having to do an enormous amount or really any addition. Um, so this class does not involve calculus, so we're not going to learn about that wonderful bit of magic. Um, but instead, let me end this video by saying by mentioning a special case. So suppose it happens to be the case that this thing that we're adding up, in this case these hypotenuses, Suppose they happen to be constant. If that's the case, then this formula has a particularly simple, uh, simple form. And let me write that out. Okay, so in the special case where this term happens to be constant, it doesn't change as y changes. In this case, that would mean it would be a constant hypotenuse. Um, then we could basically do this integration by multiplying. And then this formula simplifies tremendously, and the path length is just this, which is a constant, times delta y, how far we go in the y direction. And let me just add that um, this term being constant, what does that mean? Well, that means that, um, okay, well, 1, that's constant. That's not changing. Um, so the way this is constant is if dx dy is constant, i.e., if dx over dy is constant. In that case, then we just add the hypotenuse, 
by this length. Just like if the width of the auditorium is constant, we can just take the number of row, uh, number of seats in a row by the number of rows in this direction and just straight up multiply them together. All right, so this seems like a lot of machinery for just figuring out the length of a path. So um, in the next video, I'm gonna work through an example and I think you'll see, all right, this isn't so bad. And um, then we're gonna do all of this again, but in space time when we'll be looking at the space time interval. But before I get to that, let's work through an example that I think will make all of this seem okay.